Hey, how's it going? Keith Morgan here for TechTarot.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to export our building to be put into After Effects for our final composite. Uh, so we're just going to quickly show you how to uh, actually um, light up or uh, light it, uh, set up the perspective, and then uh, choose correct uh, render settings for your uh, image, and then we will jump into After Effects in our final part. Uh, so for this part of the tutorial, we're just going to uh, show you how to do this quite quickly, um, but we'll keep it as simple as possible. So uh, first things first, we're going to go ahead and load in our uh, background image, um, just so we can see uh, the perspective and match it up in the camera. So uh, what I'm going to do is under uh, the property panel here, if we go down far enough, we'll see background images. If we go and hit add an image and choose our movie clip, or an image if you just render out a single frame of uh, the footage you're using. And we go and find it. Um, and we do that, making sure we turn off camera clip. Uh, you can see we have our footage in the background. Now I'm just going to turn our node editor, editor here into a timeline. Uh, we can actually scrub through and see uh, the footage. And I'm just going to zoom out so I can see what we're using. So you can see uh, when the footage is over, it just stops. Um, so we'll go to where we find like a nice uh, opening here in the uh, the shot uh, for us to line up. So I'm just going to um, go up here and choose lock camera to view. So that way we can just continuously uh, stay in the camera view while still moving. And what we have to do now is set up uh, the optics of the camera. Uh, so that it matches the scene that we are compositing with. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and right click on the camera border here and if we go to the camera settings um, well, we shot the background plate with a 55 millimeter lens so I'm going to change the focal length to 55 millimeters and uh, that'll just make sure the uh, perspective uh, matches a bit better. So we have that and so now we're just going to go ahead and loosely line it up. Um, so now you're probably noticing that the scale of the building is probably a little bit too uh, off to the building already in the scene. So to uh, fix that, we're going to go ahead and actually scale this to approximate uh, realistic uh, proportions and then uh, judge the scale uh, from the two objects. So with our building selected, I'm going to go over here to the, um, the scene, or, uh, yeah, the scene tab here and under units, change it from none to imperial and that'll change it from blender units to feet and inches. And if we come up here, we can see um, our dimensions now. So you can see that the building is 40 feet high. Um, it being a 12-story building, it'd be closer to 120 feet high. So we're just going to, and uh, let's see, we don't want to scale it. Um, I'm just going to turn off lock camera to view just so we can see what's going on here. Um, we don't want to, like, scale it. Like, if we start scaling it, it'll uh, actually... Uh, we're lucky we have our origin point here on the ground plane, so it will scale from the ground, but if your origin point was in the middle of the building, it would start scaling past your ground plane, and you might not want that. So you would just want to make sure your origin's on the bottom here, or um, you're scaling from the 3D cursor. Um, moving on, back to our camera here. Uh, I'm just going to scale it up um, so that our dimensions here are approximately you know, 100 something feet maybe. sure something like that uh, making sure we're turning on lock camera to view again and then we'll just zoom out a bit with our mouse wheel and you can see that our building starts getting cut off you have to turn on the clipping on your uh, camera as well so we'll, under our camera we can just up that up something large enough um, and then we will um, move this or rather we'll zoom out so that we can start scaling this and I'm just using the door here uh, approximately a little bit larger than the windows over there and uh, maybe zoom in a bit yeah, something like that um, and you want to make sure that you know you're not going to see underneath the building because you obviously wouldn't ever do that in real life um, and you can set up the perspective of the building how you want. We're shooting on a, or we shot on a, a hillside here, and the hill kind of goes around in a semicircle, so, you know, the building could be facing different directions if it wanted to be, or rather if you wanted it to be. Um, 
And I'm also gonna rotate the camera very slightly just to line it up with that line a bit better. And just get something like that. Um, so we have that. Um, don't worry about it looking out of place so far. Um, we'll be doing uh, a lot of touch-up in After Effects. Um, so we have that, uh, but now we have to light it. So we have a, a sun lamp over here, but you know we don't know exactly what it's doing. So if we go to Rendered, um, you can see you know we have the light source here. Um, and when we actually shot it, uh, it was dusk um, it, time. So it was sunset, uh, the sun was coming in from, uh, if I just draw with the grease pencil this direction, I guess it's more from up here. Um, uh, probably close to perpendicular to, to this surface here. So I'm just going to unlock the camera again. And we're just going to come to the top and rotate our sun so that it's more or less hitting that uh, these faces perpendicular. And I'm just going to rotate it so that it's approximately the angle we had. Okay, just going to delete that grease pencil. Um, and let's see what that does. So rendered. Okay, so you can see it's way too strong, uh, especially being in the shade. So we're just going to turn the um, the strength of our sun lamp down to like a 1, maybe. Just to get uh, a bit of a key light, so you can get those nice shadows. And if you up the size of your sun, uh, you'll get uh, softer uh, shadows. Uh, which is what will be more realistic with... Um, uh, scenes that are shot in cloudiness. Uh, you'll get more diffusion of the light. So we have that. And now we're going to add a uh, environment map so we get nice reflections on the windows to mm, simulate the scene we had. So under the world tab here, uh, we're going to click the tab on color and choose environment texture. And you see we get the lovely pa uh, placeholder magenta. So let's just fix that. We'll go navigate. Uh, I just grabbed a um, uh, background off of uh, CG Skies. Um, you should pay for them, but we're just going to use the free version for uh, this educational purpose. Um, so if we look here, you can see miraculously actually the sun is in the uh, the correct spot, so we don't even have to you know touch around with that too much. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, so you can see the background showing up in our render, which we won't want when we actually do render it out. So I'm going to go to the Render tab here, and if we go under Film and turn on Transparent, it'll uh, knock out the background, and you can see this is actually uh, matching the scene quite well just like that. Um, if I go to the uh, background images here and up the opacity of it, you can see uh, the effect a bit better. Um, yeah, we actually don't have to do too much there, so that's good. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and save that. And... Um, just to, uh, if we look here, there's nothing underneath our building, so, you know, it's just going to get lit with black underneath, which uh, wouldn't actually happen. You'd have a bit of bounce lighting from the ground. So I'm just going to go back to solid view, point, uh, view mode here. And with our cursor in the center, I'm going to add a mesh, um, or a plane, rather. And I'm just going to scale it up, yeah, something like that. Move it so that it's still under the building. Yeah, something like that. And this will just act as a bounce light uh, mimicking the ground. So we're just going to give this a really quick material of a diffuse, give it a soft greeny yellow color, something like the, the grass, maybe desaturated a bit. And then, um, yeah, so we have that. And let's see what that looks like. So uh, it adds a little bit of lighting in these uh, tight crevices. So, you know, it doesn't make that. Uh, noticeable of a difference, but it definitely adds to it. Um, but you don't want that to show up in your render. So with that object selected, if we go to the Object tab, and we go down to Ray Visibility, and we turn off Camera, it will now be invisible to the camera, but it'll still be uh, an acting object in the scene in terms of the light calculations. So we have this. Um, so that's about it, actually, for setting up uh, this uh, handy dandy uh, render. So I'm just going to go ahead to the Render tab, making sure we're using GPU if we have a uh, CUDA-enabled NVIDIA graphics card for now. Um, we're going to render at the uh, uh, 1920 by 1080 uh, which is our source footage. Uh, you can render it a bit bigger if you wanted a bit more flexibility. Um, and uh, we're probably going to do that. Uh, we'll do 125 the size. Um, so that's handy. And we're just going to render out the one frame, and then we're going to track it in uh, After Effects uh, using 2D tracking, um, because we're locked off on a tripod. 
or sorry, we're uh, far away enough that the parallax isn't going to be too noticeable, so we can do uh, cheap and dirty tracking like that. Um, so that's what's good. Um, we're going to make sure that we have... Um, yeah, you don't really need to worry about this unless you're rendering a, out a video. Uh, but if you were rendering out a video, make sure you have RGBA turned on, otherwise it won't um, render uh, with the transparency in the background. Um, uh, sampling, uh, yeah, 200 is like pretty adequate for something of this. Uh, but yeah, just for fun, we'll do 500. Um, light paths, eh, you don't really have to play with this if you don't want. Uh, if you want less noise in your render, you could turn on limited global illumination and you need to get less light bounces, and that'll just help uh, get rid of some noise. Um, and everything else seems to be pretty good. Uh, reminder under performance, if you're using GPU, that the optimal tile size is 256 by 256. If you're using CPU, uh, 64 by 64. Um, and that'll just be the size of the buckets that it renders. And I guess that is that. So if we just go ahead and hit render, we can see what we're going to get. Okay, so there you have it. Here is our building. Uh, so you can see it has a transparent background here. Uh, which will make it very easy to composite later. Uh, so to save this out, we're just going to go and hit image, uh, save as image, or you can hit F3. Um, over here we're in the uh, dialog box here, we're going to make sure we have RGBA selected, so we do have transparency. Uh, we're just going to save it as a PNG, uh, just keep it nice and small. Uh, we're going to choose 16-bit, just so we have a, a bit of flexibility um, later. And I'm just going to call this... Uh, uh, building render dot png and I'll put it where I want to save it and just hit save as and now you see and we have our lovely building rendered out ready for After Effects so that is it for uh, part five of exporting your building um, stay tuned for part six in which case we will be um, actually compositing this onto our background plate. So I hope you uh, picked up some handy lighting tips here quick and uh, saw the, uh, the power of, of an environment map with a very subtle sun. You know, it's really uh, flexible, um, but it can, it can do a lot of things if you uh, just tweak a couple little things here and there. So uh, quite powerful method. Um, if you have any questions, uh, contact us on the website. And as always, this is Keith Morgan, signing off.